Good morning, Himmels. Welcome to worship on this beautiful day. It is All Saints Sunday when we remember and honor all of those persons who departed from our fellowship here at Himmels during the past year. And it is also the Sunday before Veterans Day. Uh, so we will be um, lifting up our veterans today in our prayer of the church. It is the first Sunday of the month, so the, the day when we observe Holy Communion. Also the day when we collect for the Line Mountain Food Bank. And as always, we've got a nice table full of contributions, and I want to thank each and every person who brought something. And as the first Sunday of the month, it is the day our anniversary store is open. And you may have noticed it in the hall as you um, entered this morning. I am wearing my anniversary hat. And if you would like to get one of these, or just stop back at the store after church, and, and one will be yours. Um, all the merchandise that, that is, is there that's available or, or can be ordered, and uh, we uh, appreciate everyone's support of the anniversary planning. Also want to mention that if you have, by any chance, any artwork of any one of the churches or any artifacts related to our church history, we would love to have them loaned for a period of time where the anniversary committee is looking to start a museum for the year, and we would really appreciate anything you can bring to add to that. The final Pennsylvania Dutch seminar will be this afternoon starting at 4. The Christmas story in the dialect. So that should be um, really interesting for everybody. And you may have noticed that there is no PowerPoint um, this morning, and that is because we just don't have one for today. Apologies for that oversight. Um, we are online, and we welcome all who are joining us online, and you can see and hear the service as customary, but of course there would be nothing on the screens today, and that will be back for next Sunday. Next Sunday is also our Praise and Thanksgiving Day. Kind of hard to believe it's time for that already, but it is, and Woody Wolf will be here as our guest speaker for the day. He is a uh, chaplain at Geisinger and has a really inspiring message in music to bring to each of us and all of us. So I, I hope everyone will want to participate. And just a few things um, to remind you about praise and thanksgiving. We are looking for contributions of desserts. The desserts are not provided by the church. It's been the tradition that we everyone brings something, or if you're, if you're able to prepare something, you, you bring it to contribute a dessert. Um, so please keep that in mind as you grocery shop this week. And also, next Sunday is the day when we receive the thank offering. I think it may be in the bulletin for two weeks from today, but that is taken next Sunday on the day when we have praise and thanksgiving. And Sarah has an announcement about a thankful people project. Morning. Uh, in the table in the back of the sanctuary, where the, the same table where the food bank items are, there are little leaves that are spread out on the table. We're asking everyone after the service, just stop by, take a leaf, write something on there that you are thankful for. And there's an offering plate there to just to drop it in. So kids and adults are all welcome to each take a leaf, write something on there. Uh, we did put a thankful tree up on the bulletin board back in the hallway. So once we have everybody's leaves, we're gonna put those on the bulletin board. We'd like to have it done for next Sunday for praise and thanksgiving. But any questions, just come see me. Thank you. Any other announcements before we turn to our prayer list for today? Okay, well, we want to welcome back Lynn and Arletta uh, from their mission trip. It's good to have them back, safely back with us again. And I don't really have 
anyone in particular to add, unless any of you have someone, um, I'd be happy to add. Yes. Okay, I'd be, yes. We will pray for her this morning. Anyone else to add? And as I mentioned, I'll also be praying for, um, for veterans. And speaking of veterans, do we have anyone here who served? Okay, David, do you wanna stand up? Anyone else? Okay. The three of you, all right. <laughs> Maynard, David, and David, thank you for your service. Okay, well then I would invite everyone to spend a few moments in silence and listening to the prelude as we continue to prepare for worship. Please stand if you are able for our morning confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. We have neglected actions that witness to your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent of things we have done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness, follow the way of the Spirit, and build up the body of Christ. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the prayers of all who cry out and restores us to life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare to you the forgiveness of all sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have knit your people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, 
Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 3, and verses 15 to 18, found in the Old Testament Pew Bible, pages 965-966. In the first year that Belshazzar was king of Babylonia, I had a dream and I saw a vision in the night. I wrote the dream down and this is a record of what I saw that night. Winds were blowing from all directions and lashing the surface of the ocean. Four huge beasts came up out of the ocean, each one different from the other. The vision I saw alarmed me and I was deeply disturbed. I went up to one of those standing there and asked him to explain it all. So he told me the meaning. He said, these four huge beasts are four empires which will arise on earth, and the people of the supreme God will receive royal power and keep it forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsively page 149 as printed in the bulletin. Praise the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord. Praise him in the assembly of his faithful people. Praise his name with dancing, play drums and harps in praise of him. Let God's people rejoice in their triumph and sing joyfully all night long. To defeat the nations and to punish the peoples. To punish the nations of God has commanded. This is the victory of God's people. Praise the Lord. Today's anthem holds a special meaning to me. My cousin, also relation to Lita and David Kaler and Bernice Bordner. Reverend Jimmy Schwartz, originally from Spring Glen and now resides in Maryland, was on our prayer list from a severe vehicle accident in 2019, which left him paralyzed. With God's help, many prayers and Jimmy's perseverance, he is able to walk short distances with assistance and continues to improve. His inspiration to become a pastor began here at Himmels during his late teenage years while attending a youth event. He recently has been named Chaplain Emeritus by Carroll Lutheran Village and the DEMD Synod. As a first full-time chaplain at CLV, Jimmy built the faith program from the ground up. He orchestrated a live nativity scene during de service during December. He made untold hospital visits at all hours. He performed weddings at the chapel so that grandparents of the couples could attend. He conducted funerals both for residents of the CLV 
and the community at large. He used his master's degree in counseling to help residents and staff who asked. He was the voice for those who felt they hadn't been heard. But most of all, Jimmy shared the message of God's love, which leads us to today's anthem, Eternal Father, You're Creating Sway. The lyrics, Eternal Father, You're Creating Sway, were written in 2006 by Reverend Jimmy L. Schwartz, specifically to be used as the hymn of the day at the annual All Saints Memorial Service at Carroll Lutheran Village, a continuing care retirement community of 750 residents in Westminster, Maryland. Family members and friends of the CLV residents who had died during the preceding year were invited back to the chapel where the names of the deceased, along with the date of birth and the date of death, were read, followed by the singing of this hymn. Typically, the service included a list of people numbering 75 to 80. Now, if anybody knew Jimmy or knows Jimmy, he likes to put in some jokes as he's talking. So this is one of his things. And he says, yes, Carroll Lutheran Village was a tithing community. Every year, we gave 10% of our population back to God. <laughs> <laughs> because this continuing care retirement community was interdenominational and many attendees would not have known the familiar yet challenging to sing for all the saints, Reverend Schwartz wrote these lyrics to be sung to a more popular and familiar tune known as the National Hymn, but far better known by the lyrics of God Our Fathers. This tune was composed by George William Warren for the centennial celebration of the United States Constitution and is now available in the public domain. Pastor Schwartz is most pleased to make these lyrics available to the greater church and community as the lives of the deceased loved ones are remembered and celebrated.
The second lesson is written in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 through 23, found in the New Testament Pew Bible, page 259. All things are done according to God's plan and decision, and God chose us to be his own people in union with Christ because of his own purpose. Based on what he decided from the very beginning, let us then, who were the first to, be, to have hope in Christ, praise God's glory. And you also became God's people when you heard the true message, the good news that brought you salvation. You believed in Christ, and God put his stamp of ownership on you by giving you the Holy Spirit he had promised. The Spirit is a guarantee that we shall receive what God has promised his people, and this assures us that God will give complete freedom to those who are his. Let us praise his glory. For this reason, ever since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks to God for you. I remember you in my prayers and ask that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, to give you the Spirit, who will make you wise and reveal God to you, so that you will know him. I ask that your minds be open to see his light, so that you will know what is in the hope to which he has called you. How rich are the wonderful blessings he promises his people, and how very great is his power at work in us who believe. This power working in us is the same as the mighty strength which he used when he raised Christ from death and seated him at his right side in the heavenly world. Christ rules there above all heavenly rulers, authorities, powers, and Lord. He has a title superior to all titles of authority in this world and in the next. God put all his things under Christ's feet and gave him to the church as supreme Lord over all things. The church is Christ's body, the completion of him who himself completes all things everywhere, where the word of the Lord. Please stand if you are able, once again, for the reading of this morning's gospel from Luke chapter 6, beginning with verse 20. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, happy are you poor. The kingdom of God is yours. Happy are you who are hungry now, you will be filled. Happy are you who weep now, you will laugh. Happy are you when men hate you and reject you and insult you and say that you are evil because of the Son of Man. Be happy when that happens and dance for joy, for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. For their ancestors did the very same things to the prophets. But how terrible for you who are rich now. You have had your easy life. How terrible for you who are full now. You will go hungry. How terrible for you who laugh now. You will mourn and weep. How terrible when all men speak well of you for their ancestors said the very same things to the false prophets. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone hits you on the cheek, let him hit the other one too. If someone takes your coat, let him have your shirt as well. Give to everyone who asks you for something. And when someone takes what is yours, do not ask for it back. Do for others just what you want them to do for you. This is the gospel of our Lord on this day. Please be seated. I would invite the children to come forward for your time now. Okay, and our presenter of Autumn's message this morning is Kylie. So, what is your favorite toy? Hers. What's your favorite toy? 
You have too many. Okay, well, how would you feel if someone stole your favorite toy? Sad and angry. Well, in the Bible, Jesus told us that if someone tries to steal our coat, we should just give it to them. That doesn't sound fair, right? No. We're always told that stealing is wrong, so why would we give someone a gift who tried to steal? Well, when Jesus told us to give them our coat, he meant to give what we have to those in need. If someone needs something very badly, we should share what we have with those who need it. People who are kind enough to share what they have with others and spread God's love will be blessed in life. Always be thankful and remember to forgive others. Let's pray. Dear Lord, please help us to have kindness to give and share what we have with others. Thank you for blessing us. Amen. Well, as an animal lover, my very favorite saint is St. Francis of Assisi, the founder of the Franciscan monastic order. He lived in Italy a long time ago, in the late 12th and early 13th centuries. He is remembered for his embrace of poverty and perhaps remembered even more powerfully for his devotion to all of God's creatures. Blessing of the animals services are usually held around the time of his commemorative day. In the Catholic tradition, he is considered to be the patron saint of the animals and of our environment. Today is All Saints Day. Now, when we speak of saints, we probably first think of people like St. Francis who are officially designated to be saints. We admire them for the examples they have set in living those exemplary lives. And we do endeavor to follow their examples, but we really don't expect to be able to live as well as they did. Even though we try to live our best lives, you know, we don't regard ourselves as possibly being or becoming saints. For sure, we don't measure up to the very high bar Jesus sets in our gospel for today. Now, our gospel lesson is part of Luke's account of Jesus' Sermon on the Plain, which is similar to the Sermon on the Mount recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. As our reading begins, Jesus proclaims blessings upon the poor, the hungry, the weeping, and the disciples who are hated because they have chosen to follow him. Now, the disciples would have recognized themselves in Jesus' words. I mean, they had left more comfortable lives to, for lives of hardship and following him from place to place and, um, and becoming part of his mission and ministry. Although in our day and age, we are Jesus' disciples here, and we don't 
really go hungry or embrace poverty or because of our, our Christian mission and ministry. But as we read further, we find Jesus' words that do address us, stretching across the ages to reach Christians of every generation. As his disciples, we are to love our enemies, to act on that love by doing good to those who dislike us or even hate us. We are to give generously to those who have less than we do and not to ask for the return of things taken from us by others with a greater need. And then we find the biblical basis for the golden rule as Jesus tells us to do unto others as we would have them to do to us. Now, maybe if we start with that last statement, we aren't doing too badly. I mean, we all know the golden rule. We probably learned it way back in elementary school. And we do try to follow that. We try to treat others well, just like we would hope they will treat us well. But if we work back through Jesus' guidance, it kind of gets progressively more difficult. We are generous to the church in our giving, and to the good causes. I mean, just look at that table back there full of contributions to the food bank. But Jesus appends his statement about being generous to those in need with the additional statement, if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Now, that runs against the grain of our modern way of thinking about things. For we consider theft to be a crime. There is no provision in our legal code for exoneration of Robin Hood type thieves who steal from those who are more well-to-do to provide for those who are less fortunate. And so if we aren't already struggling a bit with Jesus' words, as we continue going backwards, there is his initial injunction to love our enemies. Now, who among us can honestly say that we love our enemies, that we endeavor to do good to those who hate us? Jesus is setting a really high bar here, separating saints from sinners, a bar that seems way too high for any of us to reach. It's true, if we are judged on our own merits, we could hardly qualify to be saints. Indeed, it is a blessing that God does not judge us on our own merits. And truth be told, that's likely a blessing even for those persons who have been officially recognized as saints. Truly, they weren't acting in saintly ways every moment of their lives. And so all of us, blessedly, are judged not on our own merits, but on Jesus' merit. As our Lord and Savior, Jesus gives us that inheritance of salvation recognized in our lesson from Ephesians. At our baptism, we are marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit signifying our redemption as a child of God. And we go through our lives as children of God, being richly blessed with the gift of faith, each of us brought into God's family right here in this church, perhaps baptized here years ago, or perhaps grafted into this family, coming from churches, co congregations in other places, but now, part of God's family here. We are part of God's own community of saints, a community that stretches across time and across the nations of the world. In spite of ourselves, we are God's saints. And so it is appropriate on this All Saints Sunday to remember those saints who have departed from our family during this past year. They have now claimed the fullness of their inheritance as children of God. I mean, let's face it, like us, they too were combinations of saint and sinner, as 
all of us human beings are, all of us leave behind legacies of a mixture of good deeds and missteps. We would certainly hope that our good deeds outweigh the missteps. But in death, God has claimed each of them, and God eventually will claim us as one of God's own saints. And now, we left behind, still grieving the loss of those persons whom we loved, who are now departed during the last year, we are freed to remember each of them for all of the good things that we admired about them, all of those things that made them so special to us. Now, even going beyond this past year, we all have our own longer lists of persons dear to us who have crossed that boundary between life and death and now rest in God's eternal care. Some of them are more recently departed, and some of them have been gone for many years, a decade or maybe even decades, this is a good day for us to spend time for all of our memories of those persons who had that positive impact upon our lives, who helped to make each of us a better person. May God bless our memories and may God bless us as we endeavor to live into our designation as God's own saints right here. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God, maker of all things, as you have entrusted us with all that you have created, now gather our gifts, nourish us with this sacrament, and send us to those who hunger and thirst for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now we confess the faith that does make us the saints of God through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, united with your saints, O God, across time and place, we pray for our shared world. O Holy One, your church rests on all of the faithful who came before us. Give all of us who now make up your church the will to carry the church forward and discern your will for the future. Receive our prayer, O Lord. O God, we ask for guidance and protection for all young adults in global mission, especially Claire Weissner from our Synod, who now serves in South America. And we thank you for the work of Arletta and Lynn, who have safely returned to us from a mission trip closer to home. We pray that all who endeavor to share your love with others on the mission field may find safety and a, a productive time of mission work. Receive our prayer, O oh God. Holy One, you raise up leaders to guide your people. Kindle in all a passion to care for others, a desire to seek the common good, and the courage to love their enemies. Receive our prayer, O oh God. O oh God, you bless those who are poor, hungry, and reviled. Provide food, housing, security to all who are vulnerable or in crisis. Receive our prayer, O oh God. Holy One, we remember in thanksgiving all of those who have died, and especially these persons who were part of our community and close to our own hearts. Margaret J. Karras. June W. Long. Pamela S. Paul. Marvy E. Shock. Charles R. Karras. Paul M. Shapley. Ruth Fetter. Elwood M. Heinzelman. Orpha Hope Rothermo. Vina B. Hoke. Wipe away our tears and comfort us in our grief with the promise of everlasting life in you. Receive our prayer, O God. And we know that there are those 
among us who are here, the living ones who are in need of your healing hand and the comfort of your presence. And we pray that you might be with Danielle through this time. And we pray that you might also be present with all veterans who carry wounds of war and continue to de cope with the legacy of their service. May they find healing and hope in you. And we know there are others in need and we offer their needs now before you, praying that you will be with them, speaking their names on our lips and in our hearts. Oh God, we pray that you might accept all of our prayers. Those that we have spoken and those that are known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Are you Lord God and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit on the night in which he gave himself up for us our Lord took bread gave thanks broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the eternal mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here, O God, and upon these gifts of bread and wine, Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. body of Christ given for you.
And now for those joining us online, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. And once again, if you are able, for our post-communion prayer. We give you thanks, most gracious God, that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the God of peace who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, and who breathes upon us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Be a blessing in the world.